Hi, I just wanted to do a quick video looking at uh, a potential hack for the uh, EV Blog BM235 meter to give it uh, PC COM capability, uh, PC uh, serial RS232 communications that you could get on the BM257. And the two meters are all very equivalent meters, almost equivalent uh, functionality, except this one does have uh, the PC comms on it, and uh, this one doesn't. But interestingly, if you've uh, seen the teardown, I wanted to see if it was possible. It looked like it might actually have a pad in there for an infrared uh, diode that we could, uh, in infrared lead, that we could hack into uh, convert this to RS-232 capability. Uh, because these two do actually use exactly the same case, and you'll note that it does actually have those two holes in there are for the RS-232. Uh, Okay, so we've got ones over here, and they actually have, if you have a look in here, let's have a look. Ta-da! Behind the curtain, they, um, oh yes, they both have the uh, transparent holes in there, everything's the same. Um, they've actually changed, look, the um, piezo transducer is now on the board with the BM-235. Uh, uh, quite a few uh, significant uh, changes inside. There's less internal wiring. They don't have a shield like they do under here. You can see, see that uh, plastic uh, insulated shield down in there. They don't have that. They've uh, changed the organization of the amps jack and the milliamp microamp, they've swapped those around. And um, they've put the chipsets on the top. The chipset has uh, changed. You can tell that when a multimeter chipset uh, changes by the fact that now they've got uh, volts AC and DC on the same range, whereas this one here had volts um, DC and AC separately. And how all those ranges are configured will be um, different depending on which multimeter chipset it uses. And I do not know which multimeter chipset they use in here. Uh, it's Bryman uh, branded, so uh, they won't tell me. They just say, no, it's proprietary. Sorry, we're not going to tell you. Anyway, so they've got the uh, multimeter chipset. It'll be like a variation of one of the commercial off-the-shelf ones or an identical off-the-shelf one, but I don't know exactly what one is. haven't uh, traced out the pinouts or reverse engineered it or anything. And we've got an LCD driver up here. So, you know, there are uh, significant changes. But interestingly, look, here we go. That's Where's my poker? Here we go. There's our little infrared LED there. Notice that it only transmits. It does not have a receive, even though there's a hole in the case. There's two holes in the case, one for transmit, one receive. It only transmits the data. That's it. And interestingly, the EV Blog BM235 has a pad here for a diode. Look at that. And it looks to be in almost identical location to line up with that hole. Pretty darn close. So I thought, aha. But if we actually get in closer here, sorry, I'm going to film this in one shot. Couldn't be bothered putting my macro lens on, so hopefully you can see that. Um, the LCD driver chipset is the HY2613C. And you'll note that that trace goes up there, goes to a cap, which then goes down to ground, and it goes around over to pin 4 down there. And, um, yeah, that uh, thought, well, okay, maybe it does that. The cap didn't uh, make sense, but... Uh, Bryman actually released the RS-232 protocol for this thing, and, you know, it's a, it's a weird-ass protocol. I might have to link, in, uh, link down the uh, PDF down below, but it's available on their website, and this is for their 6,000-count digital multimeters. And um, what it does is it basically, in, like, instead of outputting an RS-232 number, like, as a string or, or whatever, it actually outputs the LCD digits, and it maps them. <laughs> which is rather unusual. So you've got to uh, decode that output. What a pain in the butt. But obviously that's how they implemented it in the, or the manufacturer of the chipset implemented it. So that's the, that's the protocol for the output. Really unusual. So it kind of made sense that this thing actually connected up to the LCD chipset. Aha, uh -huh, does that LCD chipset actually have a built-in, you know, um, RS-232 output that outputs this protocol with all the segments. It was looking promising, but... Wah, 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 wah. Take a look at the data sheet here for the uh, QFP48 package, which is the one we've got here. Sorry. Pin 4. 
on the C model, there's different models here. Uh, the C model, uh, it has like a backlight inverter and one dozen or something like that. Um, it's the LCD power voltage control input charge pump power output. So that's why there's a cap on there because it's a charge pump output. It needs a capacitor on there to do that. So it's got nothing to do at all with the um, any of this uh, protocol. It's just a coincidence <laughs> that it happened, that they've left the pad here. Why they've left the pad for the diode, I'm not uh, entirely sure. Maybe there's another mode for the um, charge pump or something. Anyway, so they've got that going to a rail there, whatever rail that is, um, a positive rail, presumably. So they're, um, yeah, they just left that part out. It just happens to be in the same location. So, well, I'm afraid I don't even have to probe that one with the scope to know that's not going to work because, well, we have the data sheet. Unless... No! There's just no other option. There is no unless. <laughs> it's a charge pump. It just... Yeah. A coincidence. So, there you go. Woo! Six minute video to tell you that. Sorry. Um, yeah, this thing has no secret uh, serial output hack, I'm afraid. Hmm. Bummer. Catch you next time.